Well, hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. It's great to have you. Today we're going to be working on my GX470 here. And uh, since I tow my camper with it here, uh, I've noticed that on the interstate and when I hit mountains that my transmission temperature gets a little higher than I'd like. Uh, so I have decided to upgrade the stock transmission cooler. And uh, let me show you what I've got together here. First, let me show you the stock transmission cooler. So this right here is the stock transmission cooler. Uh, this is where the fluid comes in from the transmission, comes through the cooler and back out. It is backwards from what you would think. You would think it would come in here and go back out here, but it's actually backwards. So um, this is the stock cooler right here. And uh, we're going to replace that and we're going to put one in that is three times as big. Should come up to about right here. We'll have to relocate these horns to over here. Uh, we'll have to take, of course, out the stock transmission cooler, and uh, I've got a custom bracket. Uh, in fact, let me go ahead and show you what I've got here. Uh, so this right here, this is the Hayden 678. This is for the GX470. This is will work on 03 through 09 GX470. And this is what they give you. Now, I bought this kit on Amazon. It's about 50 bucks. I'll throw the link down below. Uh, it comes with a hose. And this is what the cooler looks like. Boxes stay open. I understand this is a good quality cooler. So this will go in here, right about in here. And as you can see, size-wise, it is literally about three times the size of stock. So we're going to be replacing that stock one with this one, and uh, we'll see. We'll report back uh, what the difference is in transmission temperature. Now, obviously, I can't mount that here without some help. Uh, so that's where a company called Mountain Pass Off-Road uh, comes in play. A guy named Steve Foltz owns this company, and he builds these brackets. Uh, gives you all the accessories that you need, the wire that you need to relocate the horns, uh, extra wire loom, extra bolts, even the heat shrink uh, wire con butt connectors that you need in order to uh, relocate the horns. So that's very helpful. Uh, so we'll go ahead and dig into this. I'll go ahead and get this out of the package and uh, we'll come right back and show you what it looks like. All right, so just a few minutes later, we have it uh, unpackaged. It was wrapped up really nice. Uh, so this is the bracket and this is the way uh, the transmission cooler here will mount to it. I don't know if I have the orientation right or not, but I think it's, let's see, those two are down, so that's up. This should mount here just like this, and he supplies the bolts to be able to mount this transmission cooler directly up to it. You can see there, we'll mount this up on here and get it ready to uh, mount up to the GX. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on the project and uh, take you along with me, let you see how involved the process is. and. Uh, Hopefully in the end, we'll have a cooler transmission. All right, stand by. So we're gonna start the process by removing these two horns, which is in the way of the new transmission cooler. So this is a 12 millimeter uh, bolt here. We'll take these out. That will expose the wiring. It's important you do this before anything else. It's the very first step. Uh, you need to get to the wiring that's behind here. Uh, and we'll show you how to splice that open here in just a minute. All right. So we got a couple of a couple of clips here that should release. That's to the left horn. I don't think it matters. Um, but that's a single wire on the left horn. We'll pull that back and splice into this in a minute to extend it. And then here on the other horn, which is the uh, actually they're labeled left and right. This one still has a label on it left, uh, which is the driver's side. It has the double wire. Uh, so we'll uh, splice into this and extend these. Important you do this before you go mounting any trans cooler in here. Oh, this will be behind it and it'll be very hard to reach. So we're going to extend these wires over here, which uh, Steve has provided in his kit. So we'll go ahead and get working with that. Put these horns off to the side. 
wire, pull the wire loom back, pull the wire through, clip this off. We'll clip this off right here. And then we're gonna strip that back in order to extend them. There's these little wire strippers here. So I'm going to be using, he provided connectors. I'm going to be using these types of connectors. They're solder and seal connectors. Um, the interesting thing about them is they don't require any crimping. They don't require use of a soldering iron. So here's what they look like. And these are good for weather sealant. These are the red type. So this would replace a regular red crimping style uh, connector. They got a little bit of solder there in the middle. So you want to twist your wires together. We'll show you that here in a minute and make sure the, the wire is basically joined here in the very middle of this. And then as you heat it, the solder here is a low temp solder. It will melt on the wires, join them together. And this heat shrinking tube will seal up and give you a nice uh, weather tight seal. Uh, so we'll do that here. Notice of this, you want to kind of keep it level with this type of solder because it will run. And when it runs, you don't want it to run just one way. You want it to run kind of evenly. They do say to turn the wire while you're doing this. But it's kind of hard. So now we have all three of our wires extended. For our horn, we can wrap these back up and protect them now. Uh, he did give us some additional wire loom. So I'm going to leave one of those wires out right there because i got to put a plug on it. I'm going to extend the rest of the wires over. And we'll tighten this up once we get our horn mounted here in a minute. I'm not sure how far over I'll have to come. One horn is over from the other. So we'll also need to put our plugs back on here. So what we'll do here is so we'll add a little bit of loom tape to this. Find out when this stuff starts. I like this better than electrical tape. It just works better. It's what the factories use also. It's called loom, wire loom tape. And it's not really tape as much as it is a fabric. It does have a bit of a stickiness to it. But it is not as bad as electrical tape. It looks better, works better, it's more weather resistant. It will come off. And you can literally run this up and down the whole thing. Here. I'm going to cut it right here though. put these ends on here, put the plugs back on and butt connect those up. As you can see here on the plug, because I didn't have a whole lot on this side either, on the plug there's not a lot of room there. If I were stripping down here there wouldn't be a lot of room to go ahead and solder that joint. This one had less room. I may actually have enough room on this one, uh, but I was afraid to strip it with those strippers because if I mess up and strip and it pulls off too much of the wiring uh, then I've got a problem so I'm using a razor blade to, to strip them that's what these scotch lock connectors look like right here so I twist these up get them getting tight put this in on this side there you can actually put three wires together on this so it's quite handy if you want to join three wires together there's a place for three wires you slide it in until it won't go in any further. You can actually see through the bottom that it actually goes through 
This part right here in the middle is where it clamps down. So as long as you have wire past this middle part going this way, you're good. So I'll take this wire over here. We'll bend this this way. And we'll stick this in here on this end. All the way in and through. And all you have to do, oh, if I can reach them, take you a pair of pliers. You know, lock it down. You're just pushing that in, which breaks the seal, puts the gel in there. And you can see there it clamped. I don't know if you can see how well you can see that, but it clamped through them. So we've got one more to do. And that's it. Make sure they're in there. They're in there. All good. So now we have both plugs done up now fold this back put it in wire loom put some tape around it and we will be done let's go ahead and move on to mounting the horns all right so now we're going to mount our horns over here um, we've got our left one over here we're gonna mount on that bolt and our right one over here we have to bend this mountain bracket to get around this neighbor walked up so I had to stop uh, we're bending this bracket out and around this so take a pair of channel locks we're gonna bend it out a little bit more I hate bending rusty stuff and uh, then we're going to take this end right here and while we're holding that out, we're going to bend this back. So we can do that while I'm on camera too. After all, these are just horns, so they don't have to be perfect. I think that shall do. Now these two bolts right here are 10 millimeter bolts. So we're going to go ahead and break these loose. Mount our horns up. So this is the left one. And this is the shorter wire that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in my wiring harness here. clicks in then we'll wire tie that over here but uh, get that below that now that horn there I think we're going to, have to bend this one a little bit too to get it in yeah definitely this right here is in the way so I'm gonna trim this back right here and get it out of the way there we go that should make a big difference and hopefully the horn will fit up now it's better than it was the plastic piece was really in the way here we go much better Go ahead and put that bolt back in. This will go to this horn. This horn will go in right here. Right here. Go ahead and break that loose. There's our plug for that horn. Go ahead and plug it in. There we are. Cut off the 
excess wire loom. there and there we have it our horns are now relocated and mounted up they are not in the way of the fan and when the wires are they're all clearance but there's a cage around the fan anyhow I'll show you what that looks like they have been relocated now we are on to the transmission cooler all right, I know it's getting dark, but now we are going to remove three bolts to get the transmission cooler out. We're gonna remove this bolt right here. There's a top bolt down here. There's two bolts. There's one down here at the bottom. We're not gonna remove that one. We're gonna remove the top one that's holding the transmission cooler. So there's a total of three bolts. Third one's right here. Hold this cooler in and the cooler will come out off. Then we'll be left with the hoses. So let's go ahead and work these now. 10 millimeter. Here's the drama. One bolt came out, which is actually the one that needed to. There's a cage nut on the back over here. Uh, this top one right here, if you can see it or not, it broke off. And the bottom one, if you can see that or not, it broke off. Obviously, uh, both sides of it are exposed to the elements, so it rusted. Again, this truck's up from up north, so this is no surprise to me. Every time I go to wrench on it, I uh, kind of expect it's going to rust. And there's only so much that PB Blaster can do to something like that. No worries, uh, I don't think that's going to be that big of a deal and we can work around it. Uh, so the next thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to try to get the fluid out of this transmission cooler. Uh, but we'll go ahead and get this squeeze clamp off here. Should be able to pull it off the rest of the way. I doubt there's any fluid that comes out of this return line. Pretty much so empty. Go ahead and plug it up. All right, so one thing we've got to do here is we've got to take this bracket off and we'll cut it off. And the instructions, he had it taking it off here and then cutting it, cutting it back to here. But I don't see any need to take this bracket off. And honestly, if I took the bracket off, the bolts would probably just break off. So for me, I'm gonna cut this off. We do have to uh, reuse this rubber standoff here. So I'm going to use my cutoff tool here. You may notice that I put a piece of cardboard over the radiator here, and that's just to protect the, uh, actually it's the uh, air conditioning condenser. That's to protect it so that I uh, don't bang anything into it. Uh, so we got that cut off. Now what we'll do is, uh, it actually cut off pretty smooth. We'll take a little bit of spray paint and spray paint that up just to keep it from rusting. Just taking a little black spray paint. Just enough to coat it there. This is the piece that we cut off, and we need to save this rubber thing here. Now, there's a metal piece that goes through the middle here. Make sure you can see that comes out on the other side. We will not need that. Uh, we will need to push that through. All right, so I got the rubber insulator out took the metal piece out we're going to reuse these rubber insulators there's a helicopter flying overhead um, we're going to reuse these rubber insulators so that they stand off of the body of the vehicle and absorb the uh, vibration of the vehicle and not transfer it to the uh, transmission cooler right here we'll pull this one out too on the end of the transmission cooler right here so let me get these off of here and we'll get those ready for the mount up of the new cooler I wanted to show you what I'm doing here to get these out. I just use a little pick just to get behind here and kind of get between the rubber and the metal to kind of break the seal on it. And start working it loose like that. And once this comes out, that's actually what holds the rubber grommet in there. Once this comes out, you can easily slide the rubber uh, standoff right off. Now we're going to remove 
the bottom transmission cooler line. And we'll turn this up, try and get the fluid to flow backwards into it. So we're gonna go ahead and work now and get this bottom clamp off. And then I've got a bolt to stick in this because I assume fluid will come out. We've got to replace this top hose and then we'll put this hose back on the new transmission cooler, bolt it up, and then we'll add a new top hose and uh, we should be just about done with this. So let me go ahead and get this off. Vice grips are the easiest way to hold this down and work it off. Work like magic. I'm gonna take this and twist this. Ah, wants to break the seal by twisting it. She should come right off. And as I expected, we had a little fluid leakage there. Put a bolt in there just to plug it up because we're gonna reuse that line. So I don't want anything getting into it. Make sure that's in there good. That'll keep the fluid from coming out. Should at least, yep. And here's our old cooler, which is free. So time now to install the new cooler. All right, so it's about 8.30 at night. And as you may remember in the very beginning of the video, I broke a couple of bolts and I said it was okay. And it really was okay. So the bolts that I broke off, and the reason why they're okay, we have three bolts. Um, one of them was to this tab over here, which we're not going to reuse. We only needed the rubber bushing, so that was okay. The one that's problematic is the one that I broke off down here. Dang helicopter's back again. Hope you can hear me. Um, the one over here actually has a cage nut on the back of it. Uh, so I have that nut, and it'll be fine. It'll work no problem. This is the problem one down here because it broke off. I need to reuse it. Uh, and I don't have it and I checked my stash and I do not have a spare or one that's the same size or the same length so being as 8 30 all the hardware stores are already closed so we'll have to come back tomorrow and finish this job up tomorrow after I get back from the hardware store with the right bolt uh, so uh, we will uh, we'll pick this back up tomorrow all right see you then well, welcome back. It's a new day. It has been raining for the last couple of days. The last time I left you, it was dark and we had to run to the hardware store. So I've since gone to the hardware store, uh, picked up some hardware. And uh, as a refresher, here's where we're at. Uh, so this is the new bolt that I picked up. Uh, another one will go down here and one will go up here. And uh, we'll show you that in a few minutes. He provided a new one for up here. Uh, and a new nut to go back here and a washer so we'll show you how we mount this up here in just a minute okay this rubber bushing I took off earlier in the video I ended up putting it back in with the metal insert back in it I had to slide the bushing back in there and then put the metal insert back in we need that so that uh, we have we can send the bolt back through it well this one over here I've already got this staged and ready um, so what we're going to do Let's tighten this down and the transmission cooler the teeth on it are going to go through this right here first and then the bottom bracket is going to sit right in front of this one and then the top bracket is going to stand off of this one with a rubber bushing that's going to go between here and the frame of the transmission mount so I'm going to go ahead and before I do anything make sure everything fits okay so hopefully this will, uh, you see kind of what I'm doing here as I'm getting things in line. So I'm putting this side in first in between the rubber mounts. That will go there. And then we'll have a, another rubber bushing. Another rubber bushing that'll go in between here. And this just gets tightened down like that. So that should be how it mounts. That is good and even. It does clear everything. So no worries there. Plenty of room. Okay, I should mention that the only metal piece that you take out of this inside, there's three of these rubber standoffs. 
to help, for, help isolate vibration. Uh, you only remove the metal from the top one. We'll go ahead and put this through here. So we can just let this rest on here. Keep it towards the front. To put this side in first. There we go. This nut spun on here. Now, we are going to do the side one. I am going to need an extension for that. So it's down in there. This is the side one over here second. And again, you're just compressing it. You're not trying to torque it down really heavy. Just holding it in place. Before we tighten that one down too much, I want to go ahead and slap this top bolt on up here because we got to move it around a little bit. Alrighty, so I thought I was recording when I put the bottom hose on and I was not. So bottom hose goes on just like the top hose, so I'm not going to redo that. Uh, so uh, I'm only reusing the hose clamps down here. In fact, I didn't take those off at all. Um, the top hose clamps. I'm using these ringworm style hose clamps. Make sure that when you put it on, you put it on like this, with the nut facing straight up so you can get to it. Not like this, but like this. So we'll slide that on there, we'll slide this on the top. And I didn't have to replace the hose. All my hoses were actually the right length. So believe it or not, we were all good. Uh, so that's great. All right, they do provide hose with a Hayden kit in case you do need to replace it. We'll go ahead and tighten this down. Now, one thing about tightening this down, you got a nipple right here. So you want to be on this side of the nipple, but you don't want to be all the way down at the end. So you want to be in between. A good tight fitting doesn't mean tightening it down on this hose as tight as you possibly can get it. What it means is the hose clamp should indent into the rubber just enough to become flush with the rubber. I'll try to show you what I mean here in just a second. So we'll pinch it and squeeze it just a bit. And then when you run your finger across it, you shouldn't feel anything. It should be just flush. You don't want to over tighten these at all. And uh, the, this style that Toyota uses, I want to reuse those when possible, but uh, it's a bit thick to go between the hose and this. You can see the thickness of this, it's like a double wall thickness, whereas this is a single wall thickness, so it doesn't rub against the mount. Um, what you want to do is you want to give it a good tug. Make sure you cannot budge it, slip it off. Let me tell you, do not want this sliding off while you're going down the road. Make sure your hoses are not touching anything. They should not impact the headlight housing or anything else. Uh, and as long as that is good and you're good and tight here, we are done. Now all, all that's left is a bit of cleanup. And uh, we'll start it up, fill this up, run it through some gears, make sure there are no problems. And uh, we should be good to go. Quick before we start it up, I want to give you a uh, shot of the finished product. So there is the new transmission cooler for the GX470. Our uh, horns have been relocated over here in front of the fan, the front fan for uh, the radiator. Uh, and we have it all plumbed in now. It's not interfering with anything, it clears. Clears my winch. Just does, but it does clear the winch. That's mounted up. And we'll go ahead and get it started here for you. All 
we're going to check to make sure we don't have any leaks anywhere. I do not see any. And we are all good to go. All right, well, I'm gonna let that heat up. I'm gonna be giving an update on this pretty soon to let you know what I think. Okay, well, I won't leave you hanging. Uh, recorded this video about two and a half weeks ago, so now it's two and a half weeks in the future uh, from when this video was recorded on the how-to. And I have since taken the GX uh, on a trip, about a 400 mile trip one way, uh, towing my camper here, which weighs about 3,100 pounds dry. Uh, when I was hitting the mountains in it previously, I was getting up around 220, 225 degrees on the transmission temperature. Uh, on this last trip with the new transmission cooler, I didn't get above 200 and it was a much steeper climb than before. Very impressive. Also on the interstate when towing uh, about 65 to 70 miles per hour, previously on the stock transmission cooler, I was getting about 180 to 190 degrees. Uh, and this is during the middle of summer when the temperature outside is, you know, in the 90s. Uh, so uh, now I am getting about 155 to 170 max degrees when towing down the interstate at the same speed, same weight towing. So uh, on the interstate, I dropped about 10 to 15 degrees with the new transmission cooler. Uh, and towing up the mountains, I saw a considerable difference. So. Uh, worthy upgrade. I, uh, I do highly recommend it. Anyway, I uh, appreciate you viewing this video. Uh, make sure you subscribe if you have not already and uh, drop a comment below if you are interested in doing the same thing. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below and I'll answer those as well. All right, take it easy everyone. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.